Hello students, I am Mr. Sandeep here and in shaping and forming processes today in this session we are going to discuss on different cold working processes. So let us start our discussion on different cold working processes and after cold working processes we are going to introduce the forging process. So our chapter name is shaping and forming process. So shaping and forming processes are simple processes in which only shape will change, right? So with help of pressure and with help of compressive forces, we can change the shape of any metal, right? So we have discussed the concept of hot working and also cold working, right? So in the hot working, we are going to deal above recrystallization temperature and in the cold working, we can work at room temperature, right? So we have discussed the rolling process. So let us start with different cold working processes. It means we can work at room temperature, right? So let us start the first process here I mentioned. That is the wire drawing process. So as per the name here, you can make the wire or you can draw the wire with help of this process. Simple, if we want to make the wire that is small diameter metal wire, we can make with help of this wire drawing process, right? So here, what happens? Here our purpose is to make small diameter wire. How can we make the wire? Process is very simple. Between two hard metal dies, we can pass the raw material that is usually a larger diameter workpiece or a cylinder or wire and by passing it through the die that is very hard die we can reduce the diameter of our wire according to die opening this is very simple process once again I repeat between two die we can pass our large diameter workpiece or raw material and by drawing or by pulling through the die we can reduce the diameter of particular raw material or say workpiece and we can make or draw the wire through the die this is the wire drawing process this is very simple process here I mentioned the important points regarding the wire drawing process so in the wire drawing the purpose is to make the wire dies are very useful here and our raw material is nothing but large diameter wire right so wire drawing process is used for making wire so here i mentioned the setup for wire drawing process here continuously the wire is pulling or say wire is stretched and pulling force is required right so that wire can be passed through the die with very high force and pressure right so here through the small diameter die opening we can pass our raw material or wire right so by rotating the drum you can pull your wire with forces right so with forces you can pull your wire and you can make your wire having a small or say less diameter by passing through the die the same process with simple concept is a tube drawing process so here I mentioned the tube drawing process here our purpose is to make the tube or to reduce the diameter of hollow tube or the cylinder and also to decrease the thickness or maintain the thickness so how can we reduce the diameter of tube or pipe here I mentioned the same so by passing through the die, you can reduce the diameter of your hollow tube, right? So here mandrel is useful. So with help of mandrel, we can maintain the inner diameter or so we can maintain the thickness. So we can handle the thickness of the tube with help of mandrel. So mandrel is nothing but it is a cylindrical component which is used for handling the hollow jaw, right? So next here I mentioned the thread rolling process. So purpose of thread rolling is to form or to make a thread on cylindrical workpiece. So for example in the bolt, bolt is nothing but which is having a thread cut on the cylindrical workpiece. 
So if you want to cut a thread or if you want to make a thread on a cylinder, you can use thread rolling process. So in the thread rolling, two dies are used. One is a simple steady die and another is a moving die. So by relative motion and between the steady and moving die, you can put your cylindrical object that is workpiece and you can make a thread on workpiece. Right? So this is the thread rolling process. So in the thread rolling, relative motion is achieved between two dies and the die is nothing but which is having or which is made of a hard material which is having a thread or slot cut on its outer surface. Right? So with help of thread rolling, you can make a simple thread on your cylindrical object. Right? So after that, here I mentioned the heading operation. What is the purpose of heading operation? Heading operation is very useful for making the head of the mold. So in any mold, there will be head and how can you make or give the shape to your head? Heading process is used. So as per the name, in the heading process, your purpose is just to make the head and flow your metal according to your cavity, right? So there are various shapes of head available like taper shape, conical head, hexagonal head, hemispherical head. So all those type of geometries of head can be made with help of heading operation. So what happens in heading operation? In heading operation, your die or your plunger which is having a particular die cavity according to your purpose of head which is forced or giving the pressure on your material and your metal or material will take a shape according to your cavity and your head will be ready. Right? So this is known as a heading operation. Right? So different types of bold heads can be made with help of this operation. Right? After that, I mentioned the squeezing operation. What happens in squeezing and what do you mean by squeezing? Squeeze, to squeeze means to flow your metal or to flow your component in die cavity. Right? So in the squeezing operation, what happens? With help of upper and lower die, your metal will feel according to R. Your metal will feel in the cavity present between two dies. Right? So here I mentioned the view for the squeezing operation. So as per our discussion, what happens in squeezing? When you apply the upper die or when you apply the upper plunger or when you apply the force, what happens? Your metal will flow or your metal will feel in the cavity or in the empty space between the upper and lower part or between upper and lower die. Right? So here I mentioned the squeezing operation view in which your metal will feel the empty space between two dies. Right? And your final component will be ready. So this operation is known as a squeezing operation. After that I mentioned the riveting. So we are very familiar with the rivets. So rivets are used for rivets are used for joining of two plates. So with help of rivet you can make permanent joint. Right? So rivets are very useful. So how can you do riveting or in simple words, how can you apply the rivet between two plates? So here by inserting the rivet and by applying the compressive force between two hats, hemispherical riveting or hemispherical lock will be done and your riveting will be ready. Right? So riveting is nothing but it is operation for applying the rivets. Right? So in the pressure vessels, Rivets are most widely used, right? So with help of upper and lower die, you can make a hemispherical riveting head and apply the permanent joint between two plates. So this is known as a riveting. After that, here I mentioned the introduction of forging. So what do you mean by forging process? Forging is a very simple process in which with help of compressive force, you can reshape your metal, right? So between upper and lower die, you can reshape your metal with help of hammering or with help of 
compressive force. So forging is a very old process which is nothing but with help of compressive force or with help of hammering you can give shape to your metal. So it is also known as a blacksmith work or some blacksmith forging. So blacksmith or some blacksmith forging is a very old process. So in the forging your purpose is to reshape your metal with help of hammering or compressive force. Right? So here I mentioned the basic and main points regarding the forging process. And forging process is very useful process. So here I mentioned one example of forming process. So forming process is most widely used for making the connecting road of IC engine. Right? So connecting road is made with help of forging process. So as per our definition, in forging process, all we have to do is apply the compressive force and between two dies, your metal will feel according to your cavity. Right? So by taking a simple circular cylindrical road with help of dies and with help of the compressive force, your cylindrical road or cylindrical object can be reshaped according to your connecting road shape, right? So here connecting road can be made with help of forging operation, right? So connecting road is easily made with help of forging by upper and lower die and by compressive forces, right? So here I mentioned the different applications of forging. So with help of forging, you can make any component. So in the industries, Many components can be made with help of forging process. So forging process is very useful where other processes are difficult for any component. So different complex shape of job and strength point of view, forging process is very useful. Right? So here I mentioned one important and interesting video for forging process. So let's have a look on forging process. So how forging can be done? and uh, how we can make a component with help of 4G process. So here heated object is ready, here traces are used or say compressive forces can be applied with help of plunger or say with help of presses, right? So hydraulic press is one type of press. So with help of hammer or with help of press, you can apply the compressive force. So in the hot forging, your component will be heated initially, right? So, uh, with help of compressive forces, you can give shape to your metal according to your cavity. So your object or final product will be ready as shown here, right? So this very interesting process with help of compressive force, you can reshape your metal and make any component, right? So after that, here I mentioned why forging, it means why do we use forging, right? So why we are using the forging process? So I mentioned the important points regarding the forging process. Why we are using the forging, right? So there are many processes available. What is the main advantage of using forging? So strength point of view, forging process is very superior as compared to other processes. So when we are discussing different mechanical processes, forging is a superior as compared to other processes. Why do we choose forging or why we are giving so much importance to forging? Reason is here, right? So when we do comparison as a grain flow point of view or grain boundaries, forging parts are more stronger as compared to machining and casting process parts. Once again I repeat, here I mentioned the grain flow after making of component by machining, by casting and by forging. With help of forging process, the final component internal structure or Green flow, internal green flow forge part which is having a higher strength because here green boundaries are as per your part shape because 
here the grain will be flow with help of compressive forces and part made with help of 4G process will be having a higher strength right that's why connecting road is usually made with help of 4G process because your grain flow is according to your part shape that's why strength will be higher right so this is the reason why we are using 4G process for superior strength so this is all about the different old working processes and 4G process overview thank you all of you